Hello everyone. I am going to try something a little different with this video. So I will actually be pausing um, recording throughout and then I would think you guys will probably have to pause recording throughout as well. So in um, with this assignment, there's going to be a note sheet that I would like you to fill out while you're listening to what I'm saying. So this either means you should pause me right now and print the sheet that's in, in this assignment, or if you don't, if you can't do that, then you should um, pause me and maybe do like a split screen situation so you can listen to me and type, or actually you can probably just listen to me if you don't want to watch me, but you should be able to get to the note sheet so that you can type while I'm talking. Um, and it has some sentence stems for you to fill out. And I'm going to make sure that I follow it. So that's why I'll be pausing what I'm saying. Um, so the first thing I want to discuss is um, the Louisiana Purchase, um, which was a, uh, a lot of land that was purchased from the America, from the United States, from France. So France owned uh, a large section of land that we purchased from them. And I actually, I'm going to pull up a map in just a second. So I'm going to pause this for just a sec and show you exactly what the Louisiana Purchase was. Okay, um, so the Louisiana Purchase was um, like 800,000 acres of land, approximately. And here's a map of it. I think, yes. Oh no, here's a better one. Um, so it's this uh, area in white that you see right here. It's about equivalent to 15 states worth of land and it was purchased from France and uh, from Napoleon for $15 million, which is I think the equivalent uh, I read in 2011 dollars is like 42 cents an acre or something like that. If you translated it into modern day money, so a very good deal France was having lots of financial trouble. And so um, we were able to get a great deal. So it, it basically, if you look at this as sort of pre-Louisiana purchase, and although not, not all these states were states yet, it basically doubled the size of the country. Um, so it was a very big deal for the United States and it comes into play in the Missouri Compromise. Um, but you might want to, at this point, pause your um, note taking and, or pause the video and go, um, fill in the information about the Missouri, I'm sorry, about the Louisiana Purchase. So why does this um, come into play with the Missouri Compromise? Well, as you read in the um, assigned reading from yesterday, the Missouri Compromise uh, essentially said that Missouri would be let into the United States as a slave state at the same time that Maine would be let in to the United States as a slave state, so both uh, as a free state. So both of these states were going to be let in at the same time. But the other thing that the Missouri Compromise said was that um, that none of the rest of this land here's Missouri here, but none of the rest of this land could be made into slave states. So it kind of began that process of tipping the balance away from the southern slave states and towards um, the northern states, which obviously is part of the reason why the southern states chose to succeed from the Union and, and begin the Civil War. So um, that is, um, that's one, that's one part of, that's another part of the Missouri Compromise. It was not in the reading that you did. So what were the two sides of the Missouri Compromise? So we had the North and they were afraid that if there were too many Southern states that the, the pro-slavery states would have too much power and that decisions would be made based on a country that has slavery and we would not be able to eventually abolish slavery because many people in the Northern states were very opposed to slavery. The Southern states argued that new states should have the ability to join the union and choose whether they were slave or, or not slave, just the, way, just the way the original 13 had been able to choose at the signing of the Constitution. 
they felt that that should be the case for all of the new states that were coming in. That's what their argument was. Um, so the Missouri Compromise came into existence and um, it sort of tamped things down for a little while, but it didn't actually solve the problem because it didn't actually answer the question of what are we gonna do about new states? Are they going to be slave states or are they going to be free states? Because it just, it just sort of kind of put a Band-Aid on the argument until, until well, until 1850. Um, so for a couple decades, things were, were good and peaceful, well, peaceful-ish, and then, and then gold was discovered in California. I'm gonna keep this map up here because it's a good point of reference. And there was a huge gold rush to California and California wanted to become a state. They applied for statehood. And it was decided in the Compromise of 1850 that California would be a free state, but that they would have to send one pro-slavery senator to Congress. So that was the Compromise of 1850, um, which kind of disbanded the Missouri Compromise, uh, not disbanded, but made it irrelevant. And, but once again, didn't really solve the questions that about states' rights and who got to, and how they decided whether or not they were slave states or free states and continued um, to put the Southern states at what they felt was a disadvantage. So although um, Congress attempted desperately through these compromises to try and find a balance between the, the Northern states and the desire to abolish slavery and the Southern states and their, their um, claims that the only way they could be a functioning part of the, of the United States was to continue to allow Slavery and eventually um, these compromises did did not work out. So uh, though that's basically it. That's basically what the two compromises were. And so you can um, make sure you get all of that into your note sheet and turn that in. And we'll really talk about um, the how the war actually started when we move into next week. So tomorrow, today's Tuesday while you're watching this, I have to tell myself this. Tomorrow is Wednesday and Thursday, you'll be getting writing mini lessons that will begin our research project, our Civil War research project. And then Friday we'll do a current event and then you'll be um, back to the Civil War next week with the war actually beginning. So make sure you get the sheet filled out on the Missouri Compromise and the Compromise of 1850. And then we will talk again about the Civil War. Well, we'll be talking about it tomorrow, but it will be from more of a research perspective. All right, thank you.